listen to that. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. Today we're looking at the intro chord progression to the song Strong Thinny by the band Delta Sleep from their release Twin Galaxies, one of my favorite all time math rock records. So in this video, I'll teach you how to play it and the best fingering practices for each chord. Then I'll share the simple yet highly effective secret behind this chord progression. And lastly, show you how you can easily apply it to your own ideas. The introduction is made up of four different chords and we have Devin and Glenn both playing the same chord progression, but there is a slight deviation in one of the chords in this progression and as each chord progresses it just seems to get nastier and nastier coming to this final major minor seven chord that just really has this like beautiful tension to it and to go through the chords we're starting with this C sharp minor nine chord and I'll put the fingering on screen for you here with the chord charts <laughs> Then this is followed by this wonderful inversion. It's a G sharp minor with a B in the bass. So we take that third from the G sharp. This one here. And we put it in the root position. Wonderful bit of tension in that minor chord there. And then we suddenly Let's keep the same fingering and we're going to jump up for Glenn's chord here. We're going to go up to the 13th fret and play the same thing. <laughs> oh, and that one just adds some <laughs> beautiful yet uh, unexpected tension there. Further just adding to this tension as this chord progression builds. And um, for Devin here, he's playing the same thing, but he's up here uh, playing an octave lower. <laughs> To get this lovely like wide octave sound just thickening the sound as this chord progression goes along and lastly we get this beautiful yet ugly if that's a description we could use for this major minor seven chord so we've got this f major seven sound but we're going to add the g sharp oh, listen to that <laughs> what are they doing <laughs> really nasty but instead of this G sharp being out here, we're going to put that into root position. And that just rounds off this really ugly kind of chord progression journey that we've been on. And when you put them together, we can hear the tension building here. C sharp minor 9. G sharp minor with the, D, uh, the B in the bass. And now the D minor with the F in the bass. What are they doing? And then lastly, this F sharp major minor chord with the G sharp in the bass to round off the chord progression. Sounding nasty. And they take it one step further as well, they're adding this 11-8 um, time signature to it. And to count 11-8 is quite tricky. So what they what we can do instead here is we can subdivide 11-8 into different counts. And we can do a count of 3, 3, 2, and 3. <laughs> So that's going to be two counts of three. And that's your group of two. And then there's another group of three before we shift to the next chord. And the, the wonderful thing is, it's just that same strumming pattern repeated. So it's like, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, to count up to 11. And when you put both chord progressions together, we get this lovely fixed sound, and it sounds like this. Moving on, you might be wondering, well, how did they come up with such a chord progression? Is it just a random choice of chords? Well, it might seem like that on the surface, but after doing a little bit of inspection, we can break this down and we can see there's a purposeful, purposeful choice of chords going on here. And I can explain that with a simple bit of music theory. So this four chord introduction makes use of two key signatures. And I ask, can you work out what those key signatures are? Maybe you've done this already. And can you notice which chord we're actually pivoting to that other key signature. So feel free to pause here and try and work that out if you want to. So the two key signatures are C sharp minor, and the other one is a D sharp minor. Yes, um, a chromatic key change here. So we're just going up one semitone. 
And that's what's really adding to this tension. And the chord that changes to that different key is going to be this D minor with the F in the bass. Certainly here we're going to D minor as the key. And I worked this out, well, I was scratching my head ages trying to work this out, to be honest. Uh, I spent a good few hours and then it suddenly clicked when I looked at the next part of this song, there's a chromatic shift from this C sharp minor chord. And it chromatically goes to to this D minor instead. And then it suddenly clicked, ah, there's a chromatic shift between these two keys. And this is what's really adding to the tension in this chord progression. What you would expect to hear is this. C sharp minor. G sharp minor with the B in the bass, then probably this chord here instead. Another C sharp minor inversion with the E in the bass. And that would be followed by this E major inversion instead. It just doesn't have the same punch as modulating up that semitone to really catch your ear. So you hear that now. So that just really jumps out, it really grabs your ear and that's what makes this chord progression so interesting. Well you're probably saying to yourself now, well that all sounds quite complicated to use. While in theory, yes, it can be quite a complicated thing to explain, in application it's actually really straightforward. So like we discovered, we're using chromaticism and why would we want to use it? Well as we've discovered, it really catches your listener's ear. This kind of chromaticism happens in a ton of songs and I noticed when I was listening to the song uh, Playing God by Polyphia, this is this jazzy section in the middle on the classical guitar. And he's actually, um, Tim is actually playing a, an E minor 9 chord here. Um, and then he chromatically shifts to the, the, F, uh, the F here. And that really does capture your ear, right? Whatever chords come after that, I've not actually learnt it, but that use of chromatism really jumps out and it catches your ear. And it's simple in application, that's all we need to do. You can even do this with major chords just to prove this works. Here's a D major nine chord, just shift this up chromatically. Again, it just leaps out. Going down works that as well. It uh, works that way as well. So when you're writing an idea, maybe you want to add just a little bit of, you know, out of field, left field, whatever the, the expression is. Just really capture your listener's ear. Just think about if you could add some chromaticism like that, just to really catch the ear and rehook them into your song. As we've established, Delta Sleep use chromaticism in this song. Another awesome trick they use is something called borrow chords. And in this video, I explain what that concept is and how you can use it. Thanks for watching. Patrons can grab a guitar profile and a PDF of these chords to help you practice. There's a link for that down below in the description. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.